Hi guys, welcome back to junkminds.com. Let's go to chapter number 5, gameplay. A small chapter this one and to be honest, this is just an extension of the searching techniques chapter. Precisely in this chapter, we'll be learning about two different concepts, min-max search and alpha-beta cutoff or what is also called as alpha-beta pruning. Examination, you can expect a problem-based question wherein you might be given a tree and you are required to perform min-max search and alpha-beta cutoff. In the first part, let us get started with min-max search and alpha-beta cutoff and then I'll take you to crypt arithmetic in my second part. Now, here's the problem. Solve the given tree using min-max search and alpha-beta cutoff. Now, over here, you have a tree in front of you and you are required to solve this using both the methods, min-max search as well as alpha-beta cutoff. But let us, let us try and make some sense out of what we are trying to do over here. Now look at it like this, say I am a computer system, I am required to make a decision over here. I am still to make a decision but I look few levels ahead before I make my decision. Now over here what you find is, okay, if I take this path, this is the cost, this is the cost for this path, this is the cost for this path. So these are the various costs that I have for different paths. The aim of both min-max search as well as alpha-beta cutoff is to find the best possible path. Say if this path comes out to be say the winning path, so what that will mean is that looking at this cost and analyzing whatever we have, this is the path that my system is going to adopt for solving the problem. So we have about 18 paths over here and how does my system go about selecting the best possible path? The first thing min-max search. How do we do this? This is one of the most simplest things that you will come across in your syllabus. Observe, how do we go about solving min-max search? Now, this is the tree where I'm planning to apply min-max search. Now, what we do is, it's like this is, say, if I'm the computer, this is my move, this is the opponent's move, this is my move. I call it as min-max search because I'm trying to maximize my chances of winning and I'm trying to minimize the opponent's chances of winning. So at different levels, I'll write max, next level is min, next level is max. Now wherever I have max, I put alpha and wherever I have min, I put beta. Now I intend to use this in my alpha beta cutoff. So at the moment, don't bother too much about the alpha and the beta. Now, once I get this, I'll start promoting the values. If you look at these three values, one, two, minus two, th these are the cost of the path. I'll pick the maximum of these and put it over here. I'll take the maximum of these, put it over here. Maximum of these, put it over here. So the maximum of all these children is what I'm going to put over here. So what I get is this. So I've promoted the max values over here. The next level is exactly opposite. So I've got three values now, two, four, and seven. The minimum of these have to be propagated. The minimum of these have to be propagated. So this is what I get over here. Now of these two, whichever is the maximum that needs to get pushed, over here of the two values, this value 2 is maximum, so I push it over here. Now over here, I'll just analyze which is the value or which is the cost which has actually reached the root node. What I find is that this value 2 got pushed here, which got pushed here, which got pushed here. So basically any of these values which reaches the root node is the winning path. So my system is going to adapt this particular path while generating the solution to this problem. So this is min-max search, the simplest possible uh, solution that you could have come across. But then when we look at min-max search, as you saw, when I started, I had developed the entire tree and then I started evaluating the best possible path. Now, for smaller problem domains, this is fine. But when I have larger problems, it's not possible for me to actually develop the entire tree and then start pushing the values. Now, what do we do in such a case? In such a case, we want to develop only that part of the tree which is needed and all those parts which are not going to generate the desired solution or which are not going to contribute in finding the best possible solution, we need not develop them at all. So we wanted a technique which is more efficient, which does not need to evaluate the entire tree before generating the solution. That is why we went to what is called as alpha beta cutoff. Now, the same problem I'm going to solve using alpha beta cutoff or what is called as alpha beta pruning. The solutions are going to be dif uh, different but obviously my answers will always remain the same whether I use min max search or whether I use alpha beta cutoff. Now 
For implementing alpha beta cutoff, we need to make two comparisons. There are two different kinds of cutoffs. See, when I say cutoff, I mean that I, I'll, I'll decide not to go ahead and evaluate that part of the tree. So that is what we'll call as cutoff. Huh. But what exactly is an alpha cutoff and what exactly is a beta cutoff? I'm going to make two comparisons over here. If minimum is less than alpha, then I'll get alpha cutoff. And wherever maximum is greater than beta, I'll take beta cutoff. So how do I start? Observe this. Now this is the same tree. I'm planning to start with alpha beta cutoff. Now, how exactly I start with alpha beta cutoff? Now, please remember, whatever the tree, whenever we are implementing alpha beta cutoff, we'll always start by evaluating the first branch entirely. So how do I start? I'll start like this. Now, over here as well, alternate levels, max, min, max. What I'll do is I've developed the first branch entirely. Now, over here of the three values, the maximum value is two, which got pushed here, out of which at the moment there was nothing so this 2 gets pushed here and this 2 has got pushed all the way to the root node now this value 2 may or may not change depending on what happens to the rest of the tree now what this means is at the moment this appears to be the best possible route for solving the problem now i'll start evaluating this tree further i'll take one branch at a time and only if i feel that the branch has the potential of getting a better path than this particular path only then i'm going to go ahead and evaluate that path else i'll cut that path off that is i'll not evaluate that path any further so let me go to the next path one path at a time now now when i go here I get this particular path. Now, please observe this. This was the value. I've got max as one. Now I need to decide whether I need to evaluate this path further. So I'll go with my comparisons. I'll check. Is this max greater than beta? Max is one, beta is two. Is this max greater than beta? No, it's not. So what do I do? I go ahead and I evaluate the tree further. I get this value. Now I get this value 3 which is greater than this. So I've got this. I'll again compare. Is this max greater than beta? I find that this max value is now 3 and beta is 2. So max is greater than beta. Now that max is greater than beta, I understand that there's no possibility of me getting a better path from this particular node. So I don't need to evaluate any of the child nodes further. So I'll not evaluate this further. And because my comparison was max greater than beta, this is a beta cutoff. Remember the two comparisons that we spoke about? If minimum is less than alpha, alpha cutoff. If max is greater than beta, it is beta cutoff. So I've got a beta cutoff. So basically, I'm not expecting or I'm not getting any better path starting from this node. Same thing goes to the next child. I'll take the first path. Four, this is the value that I'm getting. I'll again, before I proceed, I need to decide whether I need to evaluate the children over here. But then I find max greater than beta. Max is 4, beta is 2. Max greater than beta is true. That means there's no possibility of a better path. So I'll not evaluate any further. So over here you can say I've got three beta cutoffs. Now, talking with reference to the root node, I have evaluated the left subtree. Now I need to go to the right subtree and I need to adapt exactly the same strategy. Now going to the right subtree, again what I'll do is, I'll take the first branch and evaluate it completely, exactly like what we did for the left subtree. This is what I did. I got these values. Now please look at this. Of these three, the max value is one. At the moment, there was nothing over here. So this one gets pushed over here. So this is one. Remember, last time when we got this value, we had nothing here. So we had just pushed it. Now I'm getting this value and I already have a value over here. So now I need to decide whether I need to evaluate this child any further. But for that, I'll need, need to make a comparison. Now what's the comparison? I'll check. Is this minimum less than alpha? Minimum is one, alpha is two. One less than two is true. Minimum less than alpha is true. This is true. What this means is there's no possibility of me generating a better path from this particular node. So I don't evaluate this any further. So I've got two alpha cutoffs, right? Now, had there been a third child, I would have evaluated in the same fashion, but I guess there's nothing like that. So at the moment, I've evaluated the entire tree. Let me, let me check this again. Of the three values over here, minimum is still two. 
over here there's just one value one of the two max is this so basically the first path that we got eventually is turning out to be the best node it is possible in some cases that the values might change now but that is not happening in this example so again i've got the same path as my winning path but over here the number of cutoffs are two alpha cutoffs and two beta cutoffs kindly remember for any problem involving alpha beta cutoff the solutions are unique there can't be any other solution i'm sorry there are three beta cutoffs that i have over here and uh, and I, we have two alpha cutoffs so over here we have three beta cutoffs and two alpha cutoffs please please excuse us for the little mistake over here so this is three beta cutoffs and two alpha cutoffs so this is your solution for the fine uh, for uh, uh, alpha beta pruning generally examination they'll give you a tree like this and they'll ask you to evaluate this using both the methods uh, using alpha beta cutoff as well as min max search i leave you with one more problem you can try this on your own try solving this on your own on my next slides i'll also give you the solution but ideally look at this evaluate it on your own and only then come and cross check the solution that you see on my next slide here it is this is the winning path for min max search and when you look at alpha beta cutoff this is the solution you will have three beta cutoffs no alpha cutoffs in this case and the same path will come out as your winning path so do do try this problem on your own okay so this is the first part of the chapter where we've gone through alpha beta cutoff and uh, min max search thank you at the moment i'll take you to the second part where i will go through slightly more complicated crypt arithmetic problems till then thank you for studying with junk minds take care see you with the next video thank you